Okay, so second little video is how to uh, sharpen a chain. Now, this apparently this chain was not cutting too well. You can always, to be honest, when you look at a chain and you can see these bits of brown at the back of the teeth, that's normally a sign, I don't know why, but that, that is a sign that this chain wasn't cutting too hot, too well. And when I, if you look carefully at the teeth, and I don't know if the camera really picks it up, but I can tell this is blunt. The, the front, the leading edge of the tooth is kind of like not a lovely straight line and sharp and shiny looking. It's all a bit burred over. And up in the top corner here, that's kind of rounded off. So you can um, you can sharpen with a, a file guide. That's a whole other um, skill. But I'm just going to show you how to use my little Bunnings Ohitsu, whatever it's called, Ozito. Ozito. Yeah, never said it before. Um, which is actually a pretty good little tool, especially for people that don't know how to use a file. So, first of all, you've got to remove the um, chain from the saw by basically undoing those two nuts, pulling that cover off, and pulling the chain off. Actually, now. before I do that, I'll just explain something else. There's two things that make a saw not cut very properly, or two main things. One is when the teeth aren't sharp, and the other thing is when those things in the middle, which are called the. Why is this not focusing? Focus camera. Okay, and or these things which are called the depth gauges um, are too high. Now what happens is when the when the um, saw the, is uh, the chain's brand new, the teeth are you know they're long, and then as you sharpen them, the teeth get shorter and shorter until you end up with little short teeth way back here. But if you look at the tooth carefully, you see it's kind of like on an angle, like going up and down like this. And so as you, as the tooth gets shorter, the this little depth gauge and that determines how far the tooth digs into the wood so if you run a straight edge from the, between the top of the two teeth you can see there is a gap this is very annoying it's not focusing okay that's good now it's focused okay so uh, that piece there is the depth gauge that thing it's got 25 written on it and see if I put this um, yeah, this is hard to film and do at the same time but when I put the see how there's a gap between the top of the two teeth if I put a thing on the man this is hard alright now see the gap on the, where it says 25 there is a gap that gap has got a certain I don't know what it is off the top of my head but it's got to be there as you make the tooth shorter, that gap will get smaller and smaller until it's just about zero, and you'll tell because your saw will be cutting like sawdust instead of nice like chips. So, you know, we'll sharpen it first, then we'll check that again. Okay, when your saw chains off, you get it and you chuck it into this part thing here. And uh, it's just a rule of thumb that, that basically the teeth always have to go be facing, uh, pointing in that direction, that direction there. Okay, and then you. Um, then you have a thing underneath and you set it to 30 degrees and it's either 30 or 35 depends a bit on the on this chain but this chain's pretty good because it's got a um, uh, this teeth actually have a little line going across them which tells you the correct angle that they're supposed to be at so what I'm going to do is just um, check that when my thing comes down that's right and that is exactly the right angle no it seems to me lately that all the saws seem to have been 30 degrees so that's probably what most hand band saws are maybe racing saws or proper longer saws are more different then the important thing with a sharpening a chainsaw is that the teeth have to kind of basically be the same length that you know the right and the left cutting teeth so that's you know the one that faces that way and that tooth is its mate that faces the other way and just for example, that tooth there is uh, oh, my 8.92 long, and this one here is 8.23 to 1. Okay, so already someone's cut, sharpened the saw uh, probably by hand, and you know, if, you're, if your teeth all get 8.99, you know, 8.09, so pretty much I can sort of tell by looking at it that all the teeth, the left hand teeth are longer than the teeth on the right so that's one of the things we're going to have to correct with this sharpening is grind them so they're pretty much equal now the thing that makes that happen is this little flappy thing there because that determines how much I'm going to grind off the tooth to get it sharp um, and 
the way it works is. So you, you tighten that thingy, which holds the chain from wriggling. This determines uh, where, where the thing sits, and just coming down, I can see what I'm going to do, what, I, what I'm trying to do is have the, the um, cutting, whatever that thing, grinding disc come down and just lightly skim the front of the tooth, I'm pointing right direction, to just sharpen it up. I don't want to grind half the tooth away because then I'm only getting about three cuts before my chain's bug enough to buy a new one. Turn it on. So let's see. Nice. Okay, and that's so easy. And now that tooth, that tooth, there's a tooth, and now it's kind of just like a really, you can't really see it on the camera, but it's just sh straight and sharp and good. So, if I go down now, I loosen this off, I roll through, miss a tooth and go to the next one that's on the same angle, make sure it's back, tarred against my thing, so it's exact, each tooth I'm going to sharpen the Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down, just go, I'm going to go through, loosen, pull through, push back, tighten, cut. I'm sharpening all the, I don't know whether these are left, these are, I'm going to call these the right hand teeth, looking down, so do all of them first, and then these left hand teeth are going to have to be, we're going to have to have a bit cut off them to bring them back to the same angle as the right hand teeth. Right. One of the things I just actually kind of notice I'm doing it. Two, well, two things actually. One is that it has a, a screw thing here, that one on the top. That dip, it has a it has a stopper. That's what comes down and determines how far. It drops. It will drop. Uh, you need to obviously adjust that so that it's the the um, the grinding wheel is dropping down and really doing the whole tooth. The other thing you've got to watch out for too is that while you're sharpening, the, um, the tooth gets hot and obviously, ideally there'd be some kind of coolant because I notice that the teeth, if I go like that, if I do it too slow, the teeth get really hot and go blue, which I guess is affecting their temper. Now I think I've finished. Yeah, that's the first one I did. So, okay, we're going to change to the other side. Now, now what you do is you unscrew the thing at the bottom. You take the chain around to 30 degrees on that side. And now, you basically do the other teeth. I actually had some boys sharpening a teeth and they never, uh, they just sharpened every tooth one after another and they ground all, every second tooth completely the wrong direction, which is obviously a bit dumb. So, this tooth's going to take, I can see straight away, there's a lot to come off it to bring it back to level. So, it's almost like, the last person to sharpen this. Uh, only sharpen one on the last side. Okay. You get into a little bit of a groove where you can do it quite fast when you're done. See how the, oh, the tooth. It's actually got the scar. I think that's not that good, but I don't know what to do about it. See how that tooth's gone all black? Okay. So now I've finished, and then I don't know if this is actually the way you're supposed to do it, but I found it's pretty good. What you do now is you take the thing and put it to zero, so it's going just straight across. And then I need that off. Now we just want to look at this depth gauge thing I was talking about before. Um, so you take a straight edge. You lay it across the teeth. Uh, it's hard with that thing in there. Oh, I should turn the thing off, but it can't be tagged. No. So you lay it across there. And I can see with all that sharpening that I've done that I've actually the um, the gap now on those top of those depth gauges is really uh, kind of quite small. Now same there is a special tool you get that you lay around over the top here. But just I'm gonna take a little bit off because I know it's too small. I can tell by eye, and um, I'll just show you how you what I do to do it, and that is that you just use the, you can do it with a file, or you can use the, oh, you, can, there you, go. you can use just the grinding wheel, and just, and I can't do this one handed because I have to clamp the tooth, but you can just use that as a little grinder wheel, and just just take a little bit off, and do the same thing on every tooth. The other way is that you have a flat file like this. And you 
Here at the end. And you go across and, and, and you file it. But the trouble I get is I keep hitting my tooth, this tooth with the file and buggering up, so I quite like using the, my little grinder. Okay, I'll just do all these teeth now. You get the picture, come down. Stop, you know. And you kind of shape them a bit so they're curved as you go down. Right. Okay, and then finally, before you actually put it, if you've ever got the chain off and the bar off, you might as well take the opportunity just to do a quick thing you should do every time. Well, you have the opportunity to, and that is just clean out the bar and with something, well, and this is a hacksaw blade, and just go up and just seal that. Oh, I just saw it. Seal that skunk that lies inside the. Oh. Very hard to work out where this camera's filming. It's hard to do holding. Okay, there we go. So you just go down. I can hear the. Just get rid of the. It's normally actually here on the under surface of the bar. If you're not rotating the bar, it just gets this kind of funny lip. And actually, you can tell. Like it's actually quite good to rotate this, so even though it's got home light written. You know, I'm going to put this bar back on upside down, so to speak, so that it now wears the other side. Okay. That's it, we'll just, so, uh, I won't film me, you put it back on. One of the big things when you're putting the chain back on is get rid of, sometimes you'll be convinced that you can't get rid of this bloody um, tangle thing, but you can, it's just a matter of doing it. And lots of people have put a bar chain back on with the teeth facing the wrong way. That's embarrassing. So, you know, as you put it on, just make sure that your teeth are facing with the cutting edge facing forward. Because the important thing, you know, you put basically put the chain on the bar around the back of the sprocket. But it's when you put this cover on, it's important that you've got to look for the um, the tag, that um, that thing that's where is it? I mean, sticking up there. That's the thing that goes into the uh, bar and is what pushes the bar backwards and forwards as you screw the adjuster nut. So as you're putting this on, you know, just have it. You've got to get that located in the hole in the bar. I can't do it with one hand, but that's an important thing to do. I've seen people just get this and screw the nuts up and that thing isn't in the hole in the bar so of course then the bar can't be moved backwards and forwards as you turn the screw. What to do here just to get that to locate is I've actually got to back this off a little bit. Just, you know, and it's the same if the screw was over here in the front where it says on the on hus stills and Huskies, the older ones, then, you know, you've got to loosen that off so that you can get that to locate, which it's done now, see it's gone in nice. Then you just put your nuts on. Now, I've seen heaps of people, you know, lose the nut within five minutes of putting a bar back on because they have forgotten to tighten these up, but just, you know, put them hand tight just so that they, the bar will still slide. Thing in there. Yeah. So, screwing that up. You can see the chain's coming up. Make sure it's, you know, all located in the runners. Like I said, then just lift the tip of the bar the last minute and tighten up the nuts. I'm just going to cut to this. Um, this is my, my old still, big still, and it's actually got a different system, so I'm just going to quickly chuck that in there. Instead of uh, that home lock that I had there before, the, the little locator pin that moves the bar back and forwards was actually in the cover. Most old uh, or you know, bigger saws or stills and huskies, they have the pin um, actually sort of on the, on the chainsaw body side of things. Um, and so that's a different sort of procedure when you're putting putting it all back together again. But there, there's the pin uh, there. So what you do when you put this chainsaw back together again is that you would actually get your um, screwdriver, you'd loosen off that nut uh, screw there, that big screw head, see it? That one. And then you um, then put the bar on, but, you know, making sure that that sits on first. Just as a matter of interest, this chain was thrown off the saw and actually has um, damaged the these runners in here have all got little burrs on them and so they don't actually fit down in the bar. It's quite a common thing that happens if the chain comes off and it's a bugger because you've got to go and file all those little, um, whatever those parts are called, the bit that goes down into the bar. They'll, they'll have little you know burrs that stop it sitting in and that's what's happened to this saw which is why it's sitting on the bench.